my G's, my dogs, my homies. We are now on the fourth video on how not to fail your science GCSE. Your uncle, what's the point of exercise books? That's a good question and I'm still trying to figure it out myself. We know it's to act as a bridge between the information from the lesson into your mind. Unfortunately, you can only take in so much information at a particular time. So we get you to write down as many things as you can, assuming that you will later read those notes until it makes sense. How often do you actually revise from your notes? That's dead. I can't even read my writing sometimes because we have to write so much it ends up being messy. I always revise from my revision notes. Bro, no one was asking you. You're actually jarring. Just saying. All right, all right, all right, right. Calm down, calm down. I've had a look at both of your notes and we can improve both of them. This lesson will look at how to transform your classroom notes into effective revision notes by using a method called the Cornell Notes format. In the next two videos, mind maps and flashcards respectively, I'll show you how the Cornell Notes help to condense your classroom notes into flashcards. And if you do it right, you won't even have to buy a revision guide. Today's video is going to be broken down into three parts. Number one, classroom notes, what to do when you're actually in class. Number two, pre-vision notes, what to do when you're outside of class just before you make your revision notes. And number three, your actual revision notes, how to write, how to structure your revision notes. Today's present will be a template of the Cornell notes and also the lesson objectives for each science lesson. Stick around to see how to use them. It's all happening today. Let's get this knowledge. There's a strong correlation between disorganization and low grades. Don't play yourself. Pre this chart, clock how we plot our variable as a bar chart because the variable is categoric. And if I just baffed you with all of that, be sure to click on the card to check my video on how to draw your graphs, okay? For each lesson, make sure you have a black and blue pen, your self-assessment pens, and that could be green or red, that varies from school to school, a glue, pencil, ruler, calculator, and at least one highlighter. Most schools will be able to lend you at least one of these at the start of the year, but if you buy it yourself, you're unlikely to lose them. Now that you've got your equipment, you're ready to chop some science. You want to get down as much information as possible from class. Be sure to always have your date, title, classwork or homework on the top left hand margin and most importantly, something that a lot of my students forget sometimes, have your headings. What I mean by headings is um, a title of whatever activity you're doing. If you're answering questions from the board, your heading will be questions. If it's a matching up activity that you're doing, your heading will be matching up, etc. And write this in a contrasting pen so it stands out, okay? Notice that I'm also correcting my mistakes as I go through my work. On the issue of colour, I suggest that you don't highlight or colouring during lesson. I'll explain that in a bit. If your school has a rule that you're only meant to use red pen for feedback or marking, you can switch between blue and black pen to make things stand out. Also notice that I answer my questions in full sentences. Just look at the answers and then you should be able to work out what the question was. This means that I'm being efficient with my space and my time in lesson. Make sure you always self or peer assess each work that you're given the answers to and that you use the colours that your school dictates. <laughs> you're likely going to get a lot of worksheets to complete during your course over the year, okay? Each of these worksheets, however, is very important, so we need to organise and store them wisely. This is the method that I prefer. If it is a single sheet with at least half a page blank, fold it in half and stick it in where you were working. If you stuck it in and the information isn't clear on first glance, then I suggest that you write an appropriate title so you know exactly what that is. If the worksheet is double-sided or more than two pages long, then you should get them hole punched and also try and get your book, your exercise book, hole punched as well. Give it to your teacher to hole punch and then you get these things called treasury tags, these small things here. And then you just put that through into your worksheet and your exercise book. This saves your book looking like a hot mess. <laughs> I like calling this next bit pre 
revision notes or pre-vision. That's because we're preparing our notes to make revision notes out of them. It's best to do this straight after school, possibly in the library or in a classroom. First thing you do, write a short self-analysis of your learning in that lesson. The purpose of this is for you to get an overall idea that ties all the individual learning points together. Ask yourself and then answer these three questions. What were the three main key ideas from the lesson? How can I turn these three points into a single sentence or equation? I'll speak about equation in a second. And uh, which bits did I not understand? For my example, for number one, I've got animal cells have cell membranes, cytoplasm, mitochondria, nucleus, and ribosome. Plant cells have the same structures as animal cells, including a cell wall, chloroplast, and a permanent vacuole. Plant cells perform photosynthesis. Now for the second point, I'll show you how I can turn some of these ideas into an equation. Turning your learning into equations help you think deeply about the deeper connections. For my example, I've got plant cells equals animal cells plus chloroplast plus cell wall plus vacuole. For the last point on the point that I didn't really understand, I wrote down I didn't get how to balance the equation for photosynthesis. This bit that you self-assessed, make sure your teacher is aware of it so they can give you the correct help, okay? If you remember, I suggested saving your highlights to when you're out of class. This saves you trying to be super neat and therefore missing critical information when you're in class. Also, now that you've finished the whole lesson, you can better understand exactly which parts are the most important parts to actually highlight. And no unpicking your colours. I suggest sticking to black and blue ink for your main body of writing and for your highlights, pick a colour from this side of the colour wheel. Key tips! Try to stick to one highlighter, okay? Try to highlight only the important words, not every sentence. And also vary your page by underlining some useful information using your contrasting pens rather than just highlighting. I scan this first page four times to demonstrate the four different styles that I tend to see. Number one, there's no colour at all. Number two, only the headings is in a different colour. Number three, you have multiple highlights on one page. And the method for the final one, number four, is a conservative use of highlights. Just one. Jaden, huh? your notes tend to be like the first one. The issue here is that your eyes don't really have a place to focus on and they do not have an easy path to follow. It's cool to have them like this during the class but it's vital that you make sure you spend some time after school prepping your classroom notes to make them easier to make revision notes out of them. Alright? Tatiana. Yes uncle? Now your notes are pretty pretty, they are, they're lovely but it's a bit busy. And if you compare them to the fourth notes, you notice that it's pretty hard for your eyes to actually focus on just one thing because there's so many things going on on your page. Therefore, I suggest that you use your time in lesson to get down as much information as possible, okay? And that means that even if you're confused about something, ask your teacher and then write down the answer that they give you so that when you read through them, you won't be as confused as you was before. When you are outside of class, that's when you do your highlighting, okay? Okay. And if you want to aim for the seven, eights and nines, this is when you open up your learning objectives to find the lesson that you were learning from and then check the higher objectives for that lesson. My school uses AQA Caboodle resources and Animal and Plant Cells is the second lesson in the Cells and Transport unit. There are three tiers, aiming for four, aiming for six, and aiming for eight. You should all be aiming for six and then aim for eight once you're confident. Look at the objectives for aiming for six. My notes show the first two bullet points, so I need to work on the third bullet point in my own time. If there's a bullet point that isn't in your lessons, just go onto YouTube, research it, make sure that these additions are also made clear in your writing, all right? There's a reason why these books are called exercise books. I have no idea what that reason is, but I say that it's so that you can practice because practice makes progress. Now that our pre-vision notes are done, we can create our revision notes. 
If you remember my second video in this series that showed you how to create your personalized revision timetable, you should include the times that you create these revision notes in your timetable. Click the card if you need to download that timetable. You will need a ring binding folder. Make sure to also get some dividers that you can organize your work in. You're gonna need your Cornell notes template. You can download these from the description. Your pencil case and then coloring pencil. Have a look at how I filed my own folder. I have a section for revision notes, mind maps and past paper questions for each of my biology, chemistry and physics papers. This is the format for the Cornell notes. The top section helps you file your notes so it includes your name, date, class, topic, title and this bit on key ideas code, I'll explain that in a later lesson when we're doing mind maps. This next section over here is where you condense your class note to only include the vital bits of information. You don't need to include worksheets, activities, just the ideas that you're supposed to be gaining from those activities. Also include diagrams and make them as condensed and as colourful as they need to be. I decided not to highlight any bit of information here because all of it is equally as important. So I just use different coloured pens to make my eyes lock onto the different sections. Notice how I used my colours, the structures that are common in both animals and plants I wrote them in blue and then the ones that only in plants I wrote them in red and I kept this colour scheme for the description below. This section on the left of your questions that are linked to the ideas in your notes. By answering these questions you should be able to reproduce your revision notes which would help you better remember your classroom learning. On the sixth video on flashcards, I'll show you how we can create effective flashcards from these questions. This last bit at the bottom is where you write four more sentences that summarizes your learning. All right, so look at my completed Cornell note. The top helps me file my notes, just in case I misplaced them somewhere and I know exactly where to put them. My notes give me the important information. The questions help me condense the ideas into four sentences and these four sentences can become four flashcards in a later video. And the summary below summarizes all of my notes. If you end up using more than one template for a lesson, just add numbers to your title. For example, I wrote that this is one out of three. So this is the first page out of three pages. And yeah, now just hole punch your notes and place them in the ring binder. I hope you found all of that useful. Um, make sure to check the description below to download the Cornell notes and also the lesson objectives and yeah check out the previous videos if you don't have my adapted syllabus the revision timetable or the command words that show you how to answer each type of question that you can get if you have any questions about this lesson or any of my previous lessons just comment below let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as possible and yeah like if you like and subscribe if you want to see more of this in your feed peace